saints we give God thanks amen I'm uh, excited about Jesus and what he's doing amen and uh, so we 
we pray that you're doing all right so far. Hallelujah. Something happens when you set your mind to something. Amen. So we thank God. Praise the Lord. And so tonight, amen, we won't do it like we normally do it. Um, because I feel I feel the need for us to just pray and spend some time in prayer. Um, and each night we're going to talk about a new beginning in a certain area. And uh, so tonight we're going to talk about new beginnings as it relates to confession, as it relates to repentance, and then uh, we can hopefully we can touch on restoration um, in the sense that David in Psalm 51 famously, you know, discusses repentance and confession, but he, he comes down and he says, restore unto me the joy. And so, amen, hopefully we'll get to pray a little bit about that tonight. Um, amen. Praise God. And so, <clears throat> And so what I, um, what I envisioned is us just going into prayer about, uh, as we say, confession. And confession is uh, defined as, a, um, as uh, acknowledging. When you confess something, you acknowledge it. And uh, you freely admit it. Now, that may sound simple. But uh, it can get it can get difficult. Uh, so when you confess something, you're acknowledging it, you're admitting it. Um, and there's some powerful um, scriptures that go with that. And then we'll move on to repentance, which is a step further. It's a change of mind, heart, and in the apostolic church, we know that it's a change of direction as well. Right, so repentance is a change of direction. If I'm going in one way and I repent, I go a different way. Amen. Uh, hopefully the opposite way. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then uh, the third prayer point will touch on God's power to create in us a clean heart. Um, and then lastly, uh, we'll talk about uh, restoration where he's where David prays, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Amen. So we want to uh we want to delve into that a little. I was reminded, I'm not sure uh when this was discussed at first. I know Minister Groton talked about the tabernacle and we were part of a prayer with uh um Brother Potoski on uh, Sister Potoski on watch night, uh, not this year, but last year, on the tabernacle. But one of the things about repentance, confession, repentance, and restoration is that uh, confession and repentance is typified at that brazen altar where flesh had to die. Right? You remember that? Uh, but one key thing I want to point out is that the fire from that altar uh, was the fire that was used to light the golden candlestick of the menorah. And the fire from that altar uh, was used to light the altar of incense. And the blood from that altar was used to sprinkle on the mercy seat. And so I think the revelation is that what happens during confession and repentance is vital because you cannot progress through the tabernacle uh, unless you've got fire from the brazen altar. Unless you've got blood from that altar, uh, you can't really go into the holy place or into the holy of holies. You can't progress. And I, I'm telling you, I've seen it over and over. I've counseled people and shared with them that as long as you hold on to unforgiveness, and bitterness and those things and you don't repent and give it over to God 
it will put you in a stall, a standstill. And just as is typified in the in the um, temple, you can see it in people's lives. And so I just felt led tonight. As I say, each night we'll talk about some new beginning in some other area. But uh, tonight we're going to spend some time with confession, repentance, and restoration. And as we as we dig into some of the prayer points, I have like four prayer points. But of course, we'll allow the Holy Ghost to lead us. But as we dig into these prayer points, you know, uh, take the time to uh, think about yourself. Uh, if you need to spread out a little, amen, uh, do that. It looks like there's plenty of room. Uh, but take the time to, to, to pray and touch the throne of grace and, and uh, confess um, uh, motives that are not right, thoughts that are not right words and behaviors that are not right you have to start working on that stuff while it's still in your thought process and uh, the bible makes some promises there and when we talk about repentance think about some things that that you need to turn away from amen before we get to other people we're going to spend some time uh, with new beginnings as it relates to soul winning reaching out to others but tonight we really just as a as a representation of the church, amen, those of, us, those of us that are here now and those of us that will come, amen, we'll just spend this um, little under an hour uh, on that, amen, praise God. So I want you to be thinking about uh, some motives and thoughts and words and behaviors, some, some, uh, some things that you want to confess and things you want to repent of, and, uh, and then when we get to creating in us a clean heart, amen, God will move upon us. It's, uh, it's what he does. He has the creative power that my heart doesn't have to be right when I come to God, but that he can make it right. That's how powerful he is, amen? Praise God. And David had that faith, praise the Lord, amen. And then we'll end with the rest, with the restoring to me the joy and, and even to zero in even further on the on the restoration power of the Holy Ghost to restore, amen? And when we get there, you pray for yourself, amen, but pray for your family. Pray for your mom, your dad, um, your children, people that you've come in contact with that God has brought into your circle that need, uh, that, that, that desperately need restoration, amen? Praise God. And so... Uh, so this, this first prayer point is, is, uh, is this. All have sinned, uh, the Bible tells us that, and come short of the glory. And so we want to spend a few minutes here confessing, uh, which is to acknowledge and to admit, amen, uh, that there is sin in my life. And, and uh, the Bible doesn't leave it up for debate. It's not like something we should discuss. The Bible just says all have sinned. Everybody, amen, everybody in here, everybody that would listen online, everybody that's coming, amen, the Bible just puts us all under one umbrella, we've all sinned, and so, hallelujah, why don't we stand, and uh, praise God, if we don't, if the volume doesn't go up too high tonight, amen, don't be moved by that, amen, people don't usually uh, confess and repent real loud, amen, but have that conversation with the Lord. I'm not going to try to pump you. Amen. I just want us to go before God. Amen. And believe him. Amen. That even as we confess. 1 John 1 and 9 gives us a promise concerning confession. It says if we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So you can't cleanse yourself. You can't purify yourself. But if you confess and you be honest and transparent with God, he promises to cleanse and to purge and to purify. Amen. He's faithful and he will do it. Amen. If we do our part. So let's lift him up. Lord, we lift up your name and we thank you in this place tonight. We exalt you, Jesus Christ. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for fasting and prayer. God, I, I hallelujah. I don't know about anybody else, but I feel 
privileged. I feel charged in my spirit. I feel excited about this opportunity that you have given us, Lord, to dig deeper into the things of God and to touch the throne of grace, Lord. You said in your word that this kind goeth not forth but by fasting and by prayer. There's some things in the spirit that we can't access except we fast and we pray. Oh, God, thank you, hallelujah, for giving us the strength to fast and giving us the mind to fast. I thank you, Lord Jesus, because I, 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 I'm sure somebody doesn't have a mind to fast, but I thank you for giving us a mind to fast because it is according to your word. And I, I thank you, Jesus Christ, hallelujah. I thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to do, Lord Jesus, in the midst, every time we go on a church fast, every time you move mightily, every time you move miraculously. So we give you honor and we give you praise and we bless your name. Hallelujah. I thank you for everyone that will be healed. I thank you for everyone that will be delivered. I thank you for every mind that you're going to set, amen, on a better path. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, every bondage you're going to destroy. I thank you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for every life you're going to restore, for every backslider you're going to restore, for every prodigal son. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're going to do. And I bless you and I exalt you and I praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's a bold thing to fast in the midst of a pandemic. It's a bold thing to trust you to keep us in the midst of these trying times. But, oh, God, hallelujah, you're more than enough. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, you are. And so we give you honor and we give you praise and we bless your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, God. Thank you for the opportunity, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, hallelujah. We thank you for the throne of grace, that we can boldly approach the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find the grace to help in the time of need. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us to confess our faults one to another. Hallelujah. That we may be healed. And Lord, hallelujah, as we enter into this first prayer point, Lord, hallelujah, bring to our mind and lead us by your spirit, Lord, because there are a lot of things you have in store for us, but you're not just going to overlook sin. You're not just going to overlook, amen, our thought life. You're not just going to drive past the meditations of our heart. Hallelujah. And so, God, hallelujah, tonight we come before you, Lord, in obedience to your word. Hallelujah. You said if we confess our sins, that you're faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us. Hallelujah. Of all, from all unrighteousness. And, oh, God, right now, hallelujah, Lord, we confess, Lord, every motive that's not right, every relationship, Lord Jesus, Every, every unforgiveness in our heart, every, every ounce of malice, hallelujah. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, search us tonight, Lord God. Hallelujah. Don't let us continue, Lord, walking around, speaking in tongues and dressing appropriately and giving our tithe and offering, but having these things in our heart, Lord Jesus, that could send us straight to hell. I pray in your name, oh God, we confess, Lord, hallelujah, any unforgiveness, any bitterness, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, any thought that is not approved by you, God. You said we should take into captivity every thought unto the obedience of Jesus Christ. Oh God, hallelujah, move upon us as a spiritual body. Move upon us individually, Lord. Hallelujah, where we've done wrong, God, let us acknowledge it. That's what confession is. 
where we've treated somebody wrong, God. Let us, let us freely admit it. That's what it means to confess in the name of Jesus. It might even be in our own home. It may even be our own spouse. It may even be our own family. It may be our own mother or father. But where we've done wrong, Lord, I pray, give us the grace to confess in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, work on our mind. Oh, God, work in our spirit. Oh, God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we're reaching for callings and anointings. Ela Marocco, man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah, we're looking for purpose. Hallelujah, but God, you look on our heart. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. We need a purging tonight. Oh God, we want to pray for the sick and watch them recover. We want to lay hands on them, Lord. We want to cast out devils, but we've got to, hallelujah, have a purged heart. And hallelujah, Lord, we've got to forgive. We've got to let go. We've got, hallelujah, I pray we've got to confess, Lord Jesus, where we've fallen short in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, every time we gave our word and didn't follow through, God, we confess it in the name of Jesus. Every time we promised and didn't, hallelujah, back it up and our words fell to the ground, we confess, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. Every time I let my brother down, every time I let my sister down, how, how can I say I love God whom I can't see? Oh, and hallelujah, 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 and say I love my brother who I, hallelujah, can't see. Something is wrong, Lord. We need help. If we love our brother and love God, hallelujah, then we're good. But we can't claim to love God and not love our brother. In the name of Jesus, every time, God, I didn't show love. Forgive me, Lord, I confess it. Hallelujah. There have been times, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, where I was selfish. There were times, Lord Jesus, where I refused to extend myself. There are times, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, when somebody needed me when I couldn't and refused to be there. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that even as I confess, Lord, even as we confess these things, Jesus, that you would forgive us and, and cleanse us, oh God, in the name name of Jesus. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh yeah, it's time to talk to him right now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Every time I said I was going to pray and I didn't pray, I confess it, Lord. Every time I said I was going to fast and I, and I talked myself out of it, I confess it, Lord. Every time I said I was going to give and I did not confess it, Lord. Mm, Jesus, hallelujah. It's not just the times that we've lied, Lord, hallelujah, and clearly lied, but it's the times that we've misled somebody, Lord. It, it's still lying, Lord. Misleading people is, is still lying. We confess, Lord Jesus, sometimes we try, hallelujah, to straddle the line and straddle the fence, but I pray every time we've misled somebody, I confess it, Lord, and I ask that you would forgive, oh God, and cleanse us, Lord, and the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Mm. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, God, we're so concerned about what people think. Hallelujah, and sometimes we're not concerned enough about what you think. Oh, Jesus, I pray in your name. Help us not to look good before each other. Hallelujah. And look dirty and filthy before a holy God. I pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, try our motives. Try our plans. Hallelujah. Those that don't line up with the word, let them be rejected and removed. I pray, oh, God. Hallelujah. 
Mm, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God in the body. Every time, hallelujah. Hallelujah that we've promoted disunity. Every time that we've approached each other with the wrong attitude. Hallelujah. Every time we've looked down on somebody. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus. We confess it. Forgive us, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mm, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Ika mama 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 maroko sata. Ika baroko rede besa. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stay here. We confess it, Lord. Hallelujah. We confess it, Lord. Hallelujah. We've got adulterers in the church. We've got, hallelujah, people who drink alcohol in the church. We've got folks who smoke in the church, Lord. We, we've got folks addicted to medications in the church, Lord. I, I confess it, Lord, not to, hallelujah, call out anybody's name, but we need a cleansing, Lord Jesus. We need a purging, Lord God. We need you Lord Jesus Christ we got habitual liars in the church hallelujah God we need you Lord God we got folks addicted to social media hallelujah hallelujah we got gluttonous folks in the church God hallelujah we're not ashamed to confess tonight in the name of Jesus because we need you we need your cleansing we need your help Oh God, we got wastefulness in the church. Wasting money, wasting food, wasting time. Hallelujah. I pray in the name I confess it, Lord God. And I pray, hallelujah, for this body from the pulpit to the door that you would hear us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, hallelujah. Oh, God, hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. Every time my actions represented hate more than they represented love. Oh, Jesus, we confess it. I confess it in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. Yeah, let's keep praying, saints. We're digging, we're digging. Oh, God, every time that we've misrepresented our brother or sister, putting our mouths on them with our words, hallelujah, being uninformed, hallelujah, <coughs> becoming the equivalent of a gossip when we should be interceding, God, I confess it in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God in the church. Mm, hallelujah. Oh God, when I open my mouth to speak of my brother or my sister, if it's not uplifting, Lord, let me be shut down in the name of Jesus Christ. But I pray, Lord. Your church is not a social club. Your church is not corporate America. Your church is not the local gym. Your church is not those things. Your church is holy. And you've pulled it together to be righteous. And to walk up right before you. I pray in Jesus name. Oh God I confess ungodly conversation. I confess Lord ungodly the spreading of rumors. I confess, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, over this body. Mm, Jesus, we're reaching for miracles, but we're not going to go beyond the brazen altar until we stay here, call on your name, and ask you for mercy. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. My sonai yolomoroko sete. Ika maro kose te yala maro kose te. Mano reke se te yala masa. 
Uh, hallelujah. Come on, saint of God. Lord, forgive us uh, because we've got a public persona. God, we've got a public face. Hallelujah. We got a public one, but then we got diff a different one in private. And I confess, Lord, it's hypocrisy. I confess, Lord God, there's hypocrisy in the body of Christ. Sometimes my public face is not in agreement with my private face, and it makes me a hypocrite. But I pray pray in your name. I'm not called to be a hypocrite, but I'm called to be a saint. Oh God, and none of us want to be embarrassed and none of us want to be looked down upon, but oh God remove every mask. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Yelama, let us hallelujah, because you see through us God, and you know our rising up and our sitting down, and you know what we're going to say before we say it. Hallelujah, Jesus, there no, there's no sense in pretense when it comes to you I pray in your name for the body of Christ that we learn what it means that we're naked before you and nothing is hidden in your sight no thought hallelujah no plan no motive no desire is hidden before you God hallelujah we're not condemned for having a wrong desire but we get ourselves in trouble uh, when we won't confess it. I pray in the name of Jesus. My every desire, every thought, every motive, you see it clearly, God, and I pray over this body. Let us come before you transparently, Lord, because you see us anyway. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Help us to stop wasting our time in prayers. Hallelujah. Yelama for other people. Hallelujah. Praying so somebody else can hear me. Praying so somebody else can see me. Lord Jesus, you condemned them for that. And you told them to find a secret place and close the door. And pray in secret. And you'll be rewarded openly. But if you pray for public exception, if you pray for public attention, then you've already received your reward. And God, hallelujah, I need my reward to come from heaven. Heaven, I pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, let us confess in prayer. Uh, let us repent in prayer. Let us come clean in prayer. Oh, God, ela baroko sata. Ela mama maroko sete. Ela mama mama maroko si. Oh, God, if I don't treat my spouse right, your word declares that it will hinder my prayers. Why is it that I'm praying for healing and miracles when I can't get along at home? The devil is a liar. I've got to have an urgency. Hallelujah. To confess my sin. To confess it, Lord. And to get it right at home. And to get it right in the church. In the name of Jesus. To apologize if I have to, to confess, Lord, to repent, Lord, and to repent is to take it a little further. Oh, stay with the saints. Hallelujah. Our second prayer point is to pray for repentance. Hallelujah. And ask, hallelujah, the Lord to give us a heart and a mind to repent. Hallelujah. And it is a change. It is a step beyond confession because it is a change of mind and a change of heart and a change of direction, hallelujah. And so, God, we not only confess, hallelujah, sins of omission and sins of commission and the stuff I'm aware of, the stuff I'm not aware of. God, hallelujah. But God, God, not only that, but I, I want to turn, hallelujah, away from those things. I don't want to confess the same thing every night. Oh God, it's 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 it's, it's laborious. It's it's tiring. It's it's exhausting, Lord. And you didn't give me the Holy Ghost to repent over the to confess the same stuff every night, and and so repentance, Lord God, takes us further. And I pray for every soul praying in this church that, Hallelujah, every soul that'll pray online, God, give us the grace to repent. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Acts 3 and 19 says, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. God, if we repent, you're telling us that, th that our sins will be blotted out. If we repent, Lord, that there's a time of refreshing coming on the other side of it in the name of Jesus. And oh God, hallelujah. I'm so tired of reading in my Bible and not seeing it with my own eyes. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that you give us a new beginning as a church, Lord God. A new beginning as a body. Hallelujah. That what we read in this Bible, that we walk in that anointing. Yeah, that we exercise that same anointing. It is not just for the book of Acts church. We are the book of Acts church. I pray in your name. You said greater work shall you do. God, as we repent, let there be a blotting out. As we repent, let there be a refreshing. Oh, God, I do wonder, hallelujah, that every time we ask about signs and wonders, do we ask out of the same mouth, have I repented? Oh, God, hallelujah. Oh, God, el amarroco satah. God, I thank you for my prayer life, but I repent. I should be praying more. I repent, Lord. I, I thank you for every fast, but I, I repent, Lord. I know that there's more. Hallelujah. Fasting ordained for my life, for this church. Oh, God, we repent, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, of ingesting and digesting those things of this world that don't belong in a holy vessel. Oh, God, I pray. Hallelujah, give us the, the grace and the wisdom to turn away. From that which defiles us. Oh, uh, God, hallelujah. Oh, my God, I feel that in the Holy Ghost. Somebody ought to grab this thing in the spirit. Hallelujah, God, give us the grace to turn away from from anything that defiles us God we do not have to digest and ingest and digest everything that this filthy world is throwing our way the devil is a liar oh God hallelujah in the name of Jesus oh God hallelujah mm. oh God oh God Oh God, ela maroko sete, ela maroko sa. I'm becoming what I behold. I'm becoming what I behold. And the devil, hallelujah, ela maroko sete. Mm, hallelujah, putting defiling things before our eyes. Hallelujah, making us believe we have to. Hallelujah, see it, making, believe, making us believe we have to, hallelujah, partake. The devil is a liar, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, craziness, <clears throat> filth is in the commercials, it's in, hallelujah, it's in social media, it's on television, it's everywhere, hallelujah, Jesus, but I pray in Jesus' name, oh, that there would be a great turning away. Mm, God, in the name of Jesus, give us the grace to turn away from everything that's unclean. Mm. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ye la mano ro corre de beso na. Y kama mama ma to repent, Lord, to turn from it, God. Hallelujah. It takes action on our part. Give us the grace to do it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm, yes, Jesus. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, there's got to be something, saint of God. I know you're holy. I know you're righteous. Hallelujah. But there's got to be something that God is calling you to turn away from. Mm, in the name of Jesus. There's got to be something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I believe it's standing in the way of healing. 
I believe it's standing in the way of somebody's deliverance. <clears throat> I believe it's standing in the way of somebody's salvation. There's got to be repentance in the body of Christ. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. Help us to turn away, Lord. To acknowledge it and to turn away in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, every long-standing ought. Hallelujah, let us turn away. Hallelujah, every long-standing unforgiveness. Let us turn away. Hallelujah, the broken relationships that we just check off and move on. God, it's, it's not right. Hallelujah. It's not right, Lord. It's not right. You've given us the ministry of reconciliation, the word of reconciliation. Hallelujah. We should not be checking off failed relationships. Hallelujah. On the left and the right. Hallelujah. And speaking in tongues at the same time. The devil is a liar. We ought to be reconciling somewhere, somehow. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Oh, God, I repent. I repent, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Mm. How many times shall I forgive my brother? How many times shall I let it go? How many times, hallelujah, shall I be reconciled, Lord? Mm, Jesus. How many times have you forgiven me? Oh, that's the foundation of forgiveness. That's the foundation of reconciling with my brother. How many times have you forgiven me? How many times has your mercy saved me? Oh, God. How many times has your grace overshadowed? Hallelujah. My mistakes and my flaws and my negligence how many times have you forgiven me that's how i should deal with my brother that's how i should deal with the one that has offended me that's how i should deal hallelujah mm, hallelujah not enough to just acknowledge it Lord hallelujah we've become professionals at acknowledging sometimes hallelujah hallelujah I watch too much television I'm too much on social media I'm on my phone too much I'm on my tablet too much I I've gotten used to confessing but what I haven't gotten used to is turning hallelujah Jesus and I need you to help me I need to turn I need to turn. Hallelujah. I need to turn. I need to turn. Give me the grace to turn. Give me the grace to turn. Hallelujah. Give me the grace to turn. Nobody can hinder my ministry. Nobody can hinder my walk in the Lord. No one can hinder the miracles in my life. The devil doesn't have a chance. But if I have unrepentance in my heart, if I have bitterness and unconfessed sin, then I am my own worst enemy. God help me to turn. Help me to turn. Help me to turn. Help me to turn, God. Help me to turn, Lord. Jesus, why can I see everyone else's need to turn and I can't see my own? Oh, God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Mm. Oh, God, we see that speck. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah in my brother's eye. But the beam in my eye, I can't see it. 
Oh, Jesus. Help us with these blind spots. Help us with these blind spots. That we're so accurate and so anointed at seeing somebody else's need to repent. But we have blind spots when it comes to our own lives. I pray in the name of Jesus. Mm. Ah. Ooh, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Ye la baso te ya ba ha. Iko yolo boko se te ya. Mika ya la baso. Hallelujah. Iko ya la maro ko se te ya live. I am a soya. Oh God. A confession and repentance sweep over this church in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us be honest with ourselves and honest with you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. My son, no rakaba sata. Kosa kama yala marokosa. Kato yolo. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, sweep over us. Oh, God. Give us the grace to acknowledge where we are. Hallelujah. Give us the grace to take responsibility in the name of Jesus. God, I got nobody to blame. I got. Got no one to point the finger at, Lord. Got no one to blame. Ah, oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus. Mm. Oh, nothing's going to change until I change. Nothing's going to change until I change. Oh, God, what a waste of time waiting on everybody around me to change. What a waste of time. Nothing changes until I change. I've got to repent. I've got to confess. I've got to change, and I need your grace. Because I've wasted too much time waiting on everybody else to change. I'm not in control of it. It's not even my business. God, help me. Give me the grace to change. Give me the grace to know I need to change. I confess. I repent. And I'm asking you. Karora si kamai sokoya la maha makoya la baroko sa. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Ya ya so ya. Iya la kosete ya. Ukoya la maha. Come on, let the Lord work. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost digging in. Hallelujah. But you're going to get out of it what you put into it. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, it's real. God, it's real. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Elamaro Corada Basata. Elama, mama, mama, mama. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 
It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. It's me in need of prayer. That's the revelation, God. It's me. Hallelujah, Jesus. There's no devil that can stop me. Hallelujah. But I can stop me. Mm, hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm, hallelujah. 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 Mm, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hmm. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 God. Hallelujah. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. For what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not do. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Oh God, hallelujah. David prayed a prayer, and this is our third, maybe it'll be our last prayer point. Amen. He said in, Revel in, in Psalms 51 and 10, he said, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. And he's, he's acknowledging that he has faith that, that even though his heart is corrupt, that God can create a clean heart in him. Hallelujah. And that's why we're in church. We, we know that we're sinners, amen, saved by the grace of God. But he can create in us a clean heart. And even as we confess and repent, amen, we know the power of God to create. The same God that created the heavens and the earth, that God, amen, can create in us a clean heart. So let's spend a few minutes, amen, uh, on this prayer point, amen, uh, that we need God to create in us a clean heart and to renew a right spirit within us. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift up your name again and we thank you. Hallelujah for confession and repentance, Lord. And hallelujah, the things you're doing there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But God, we also pray, hallelujah, that it's not just the acts of sin or, amen, keeping a record of, of uh, this act or that act of sin or that word, amen, or that disobedience. But, God, it is, it is where it emanates from. It is the heart. It is the spirit. And, God, we need you to create in us. And we need you to work in us by your spirit, Hallelujah. By your Holy Ghost power, by your creative power. Hallelujah. We need you, God, to create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. And somebody thinks that because I got the Holy Ghost, I don't need to pray that prayer. But hallelujah, from what I understand, people still fall in sin even after they get the Holy Ghost. And 
And people still hold grudges even after they get the Holy Ghost. And hallelujah. So we need to pray, Lord, continue to work in our heart and create in us a clean heart, Lord. And clean motives, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let our motives, hallelujah, uh, be acceptable, Lord. Our meditations of our heart be acceptable unto you. In the name of Jesus, I thank you tonight. And I, I praise you tonight, God. Ilama oradabasi koradabasa. A clean heart, God. Hallelujah. I just want to look at a person differently. I just, hallelujah, I want to have a different outlook, Lord. I, I want to have a positivity. I want to believe you for the miraculous. I want to, I want to believe you, Lord, for great things. I, I want the jadedness gone. I want a heart, hallelujah, that, that's, that's like a child, full of expectation, hallelujah, trusting you, God, that all things are possible to them that believe lord i need a new heart hallelujah i need a new heart hallelujah the truth is sometimes i'm full of doubt the truth is i'm jaded at times the, the truth is that you whisper hallelujah what you're going to do and then i wonder how is that even possible god i need a clean heart i need a clean heart hallelujah when my heart is not clean you can give me a compliment and i can't even accept it Hallelujah, because I run it through my dirty heart, and by the time I'm done, hallelujah, I'm questioning whatever, what, where it came from and what the motive was. I pray, Lord, I need a clean heart. I need to think right. I need to, hallelujah, I pray in the name of Jesus for the body of Christ, creating us a clean heart, creating us a clean heart, Lord. We need you to work in our heart. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ. Yay, hallelujah, Jesus. Take out the negativity, Lord. Take out the doubt and the unbelief, Lord. Take out the jealousy and the envy, God. Oh, God, oh, God, please take out the excuses because all of my excuses keep me in the same place. Hallelujah. My well-honed and practiced excuses. Hallelujah. They leave me in the same place. God, take the excuses out of my heart. Oh, God, I need a clean heart. And renew a right spirit within me in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, as we begin this fast, oh, God, cleanse our hearts. Oh, God, cleanse our hearts. Let us have a heart for others. Let us have a consideration for others. Oh, Jesus, I pray in your name. Give me a burden, Lord. A heart like yours has a burden for somebody else. <clears throat> a new heart, Lord, has a desire to see somebody else get the victory. I pray in the name of Jesus. We need new hearts, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. And a right spirit, God. Yelama, this world has taken its toll. And the trials have taken their toll. Mm. A clean heart. Create in me. Mm. A clean heart. Yelama roko besa. Create in me a clean heart, uh, one that can believe, one that can have faith in God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. One that thinks the best concerning everybody, even the person struggling the most. Give me a heart to think the best towards them. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm, God, hallelujah. Oh, uh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm, Jesus, thank you. Give me a clean heart, oh God. Give me a clean heart, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Maya la maro corre de besa. Mm, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. My motives have got to be right, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, so many times I wonder why it takes so long. Sometimes I wonder why the breakthrough hasn't come. But, oh, God, sometimes my motives are not right. The problem is I got bad motives. I got corrupt motives. I, my motives came from the world. They didn't come from heaven. Ah, uh, Jesus, check our motives. Touch our heart. Let the motive be, hallelujah, godly. Let it be holy. 
Hallelujah. Let it, let it seek to glorify God and not to glorify my flesh. I pray in the name of Jesus. So many motives are for self-glory. So many motives are for self-promotion. Oh, God. And then we wonder why you won't move in the midst of it. But I pray in your name, purify our motives. Oh, God, the meditations of our heart. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God in the highest. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, yala maroko sata. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Savior. Mm, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. And why don't we just stand for this last prayer point? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not sure what you're hearing, but it sounds real good in here to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. The sound of confession and repentance in the church. Amen. It's a good sound. Hallelujah. For those, of, for those of us who will embrace it, praise God. But we just got a few minutes, amen, before we go into our, into our um, classes. And so uh, the last point um, that I felt for us tonight as we confess and repent is that, is that David prayed for restoration. In Psalm 51 and 12, he said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. And the with thy is not in many translations uh, because that directs it towards like uphold me with your spirit, God. But some scholars believe because that wasn't there, David was saying when he said uphold up, and uphold free and uphold me free spirit, what he was asking God for is give me a spirit and a mind that willing to obey you. I, I want to, a desire to obey you. Amen. And so restore uh, the joy of, of thy salvation, and not only for a moment, amen, not only for a Sunday morning, but at, let me live with this passion to serve you and to obey you. Let that be a part, amen, of what you're doing in my life. And, and while we're fasting and praying, saints, you've heard me say this before. I don't believe fasting and prayer is for some momentary breakthrough. I believe when you embrace fasting and you're real about it, that you're changed forever. You don't just change momentarily and then go back to some stuff. But when you really embrace a fast, God changes you forever. And I just want to spend a couple of minutes, amen, praying uh, like David prayed. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and give me a mind and a heart and a spirit to want to obey you. The desire to obey you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, we lift up your name one more time over the body of Christ, Lord, and we pray for the restoration, amen, of the Holy Ghost to move upon this church, the restoring power of your spirit, Lord God. Restore the joy of thy salvation, what it felt like when I, hallelujah, felt the touch of your saving hand. Hallelujah, Jesus, Jehovah, Savior, when I first met you, hallelujah, and, and knew that you were delivering me from a, from a, from a mindset of, of, of depression and discouragement, hallelujah, changing my trajectory from hell to heaven. Restore to me that joy, Lord. Restore in the body of Christ, God. We're so busy and the world is so heavy and so much confusion and division, Lord God. But I pray in the name of Jesus that in the body of Christ there would be a restoring. Let the power of the Holy Ghost restore us and renew us, Lord Jesus, as only you can. Hallelujah, restore, 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 Lord. Let this fast be uh, unlike any other fast, God. But give me the grace to go through it, hallelujah, and come out of it restored in the name of Jesus. A passion for your word and a passion for prayer and a passion for the things of God, a, a passion for the sinner, a passion for the drug addict, a passion for those bound, a passion for those that are homeless, a passion for those in my family, hallelujah, that can't see their way spiritually. Lord, restore the joy. 
Restore, restore, restore the joy of witnessing, Lord, and telling somebody about you. Restore the joy of teaching a Bible study. Restore the joy of praying with a stranger. I pray in Jesus' name. God, we need you to restore us. Restore the joy. Restore the joy. Restore the joy. When the church talks about restoration, it's often about money. It's often about stuff. Holla, restore my car. I'm going to get everything the devil stole. My bank account, my house back, my car back. But what about the restoration of spiritual riches? What about the restoration of sharing your testimony with somebody and seeing the lights, hallelujah, come on in the spirit? Oh, God, I pray in Jesus' name, restore. Restore my witness. Restore the joy of singing spiritual songs. Fill my house and my mind. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ. Mm. Restoration. Restoration, Lord. Restoration. 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 Restore us, God. Hallelujah. Protect us and cover us, Lord. I don't want all the ailments that the world has. I reject them. I'm under your covering. I'm under your blood. I reject the world's depression. I reject the world's anxiety. I reject the world's fear. I reject, hallelujah, I reject it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. Yela Marocco, restore us. Hallelujah. Restore in the body. Hallelujah. Eight days, Lord. This is just the first day. Give us strength. Give us the grace to complete what we started. You're not just the alpha, but you're the alpha and the omega. You're the beginning and the end. And just like you gave us the strength to start, you're going to give us the strength to finish. And we're going to rejoice. Next Friday morning is going to be a morning of rejoicing. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. It's your grace that's going to carry us there. It's your grace that's going to bring us to it. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ. I bless you. Hallelujah. I exalt you in Jesus' name. All right, God bless you, saints. Let's go to our, amen, classes and pray the Lord's blessing on every teacher in Jesus' name and every student. louder is what you're saying okay <clears throat> praise the lord everyone welcome to another thursday night bible study at grace and glory god is so good do you have your books with you today does everyone have a book were you able to read through some of the lesson uh this week i pray that you were able to read through some of the lesson we're on lesson 2.2 .2. um yeah 2.2 .2, god wants our all God wants our all. Um, <clears throat> and so as I was going over this, um, just some thoughts came to my mind about um, just our all and what it is and those type of things. And so um, I want to take you to a, a little trip, a little brochure. I have a little brochure. I want to introduce you to the Grace Country Club. And uh, if you could, uh, if you could, 
uh, take your eyes to the screen. I think we have some pictures for you here. Uh, we're just going to have a little brochure <clears throat> about what we have in store for you at the Grace Country Club. I don't know if you've ever been to a country club, but I've looked up some stuff. Just any, just any of them, but just put the farm last. So this is my quick presentation. I went to a vacation one time, and on the vacation we had, we got some free stuff. If we went to a, uh, a timeshare presentation, you know, they gave you some free stuff. So this is our presentation. Oh, so on the, on the air we have this lake. This is the uh, Altais Lake. Um, next, so you can see this beautiful lake, this beautiful scenery that we have. Next, uh, next picture. Um, so, oh, this is the Barnes Golf Course. I want you to see at the Grace Country Club. This is some of the things that I'm. I hope you'll be signing up for in a second. Next, uh, oh, so this is the uh, the Blake Spa. By the way, this is the spa. This is this is named after people in the church. If you haven't caught on yet, okay. I don't know if you've caught on yet. This is a all right. So, uh, next we have. Oh, the tennis court. This is the Bradley tennis court. All right, all right. So you have access to some of these things here, depending on your tier level. We'll talk about that in a second. Next, we have, oh, the Bruce basketball court. All right, this is the Bruce basketball court. It's a full gymnasium. You can get your workout on in there. Yep. What was that? Oh, sorry, go ahead. What was the next one? Oh, this is um, the Aaron Arith Business Center. The Aaron Earth Business Center. He's a business guy, so this is you can conduct some business in this nice business center. These are all the perks at the Grace Country Club. All right. So next you have, oh, this is the uh, the Gooden Gourmet Hall. All right. So you got a yes, you sir. That's you. That's your Gourmet Hall right there. We named it after you. All right. Let's get some good food in there. All right. Uh, who we have next? All right, so this is the, I had to put my name, and my wife was like, put our name in there. So this is the Grattan Rose Garden. All right, so you get a nice, peaceful, serene area. Next, who do we have next? Oh, this is the Lewis Lounge. Mother, Mother Lewis, this is our lounge that you got right there. So any, these are some of the perks that you get from the Grace Country Club. Who do we have next? Do we have the theater coming up? Oh, this is the Martin Theater. So we do some plays, man, the Martin Theater. Very nice. We could put some plays on there. You know, we could have church service there too. I, I had to have a place that you could have a church service, so you could have church service there. Um, oh, the wallet. Uh, the, this is the Walters Wellness Center. This is the Walters Wellness Center. I don't know. You can see it in the corner, but it says Wellness Center. In there, you have the uh, you have some counseling. You have some uh, some other things that you can handle in there. So it's a good wellness center for you. These are some of the perks here. I think we have, this is the last picture. Is this the last one? Let's see. Oh, last but not least, I know Minister Milton loves curry goat. So I don't know where on the, the country club we would have this, but we have to have a goat farm for Minister Milton. So this is the Milton Goat Farm. Amen. This is, I don't know if you've ever been to a country club that has a goat farm, but you have now. So if you, this is the Milton Goat Farm. He loves goats. So I, he wouldn't be happy if we didn't have a goat farm there for him. So that's some of the things at the Grace Country Club. And then um, I was looking up different country clubs, and then the cost of the country club, it's, don't worry, it's, it's a little pricey, but you can afford it. So then silver level, it's uh, $500,000 annually. Hey amen. I got an amen. I didn't get any woos. I thought I was going to get some, like, whoa. The gold level, you have uh, $750,000 annually. So with the silver the access you get, you get the access to most of the places, but with time restrictions. So with the, 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 the silver level, $500,000 annually, you may not be able to go to the farm if you want to go to the farm. I don't know the other places that you may want to go to, but there are some time restrictions with the silver. Um, with the gold, uh, you have access to all the places, but with time restrictions. So that's $750,000 annually. And uh, with platinum, you have access to all the places at any time. And that's a million dollars annually. All right. So that's what we're offering you today. If you'd like to sign up, I can talk to you in the back. You know, I just wanted to present some of the perks to you. Um, and so the reason why I was going through some of this, because when I was uh, looking over God once our all, 
Um, I was something popped into my head and kind of like this is where this kind of came from. Um, what if you were in the platinum tier level, right? And you wanted to go to the Bradley tennis court and there's no construction going on. There's nothing that you hear, nothing. But they said to you, you can't come in right now. You pay a million dollars annually, but you can't come in right now. How would you feel? Anybody, how would you feel? Or I wanted to go to the gourmet hall. I wanted to get some food. I'm hungry. The good in gourmet hall. I can't go, but I pay a million dollars annually. How is it? Sorry, it's not to be in the frame. How is it? How would you feel about that? Now, I don't go to country clubs normally, but maybe you feel some type of way. How would you feel about it, Deke? A little displaced? What would you like? What would you do? How would you handle this? Yeah. I got. I spent a million dollars, man. I don't know. The Holy Ghost might like, Lord, help me, Jesus. I'm paying a million dollars, you know. Uh, right. Yeah. Well, he doesn't run it. He's just named after him. He doesn't run it. He's just named after the. Yeah. So he might not be able to get you in because I don't know. You know, but he could. He probably. He might be able to get you in. He might be able to get you. How, would, how else would anybody else feel if uh, they didn't let you in? You paid the million dollars, top-tier level, and you couldn't get in. Now, I know we have a lot in the media. We call them Karens. How would you go? False advertisement. You'd be mad. I want my million dollars. I can't have access. It wasn't planning right. Right. I, man, listen, I need access, right. Okay. Hey, man, go ahead. Yes, sir, I agree with that. Go ahead, Sister Monique. Yeah. Yeah, you're good at that. When when stuff happens in our house, I'm like, Monique, can you call them? Can you get she's real good about getting that back. I'm like, hey man. Uh, but she's she's good about that. How would anybody else feel? Does anybody else wanna raise their hands if you had your million dollars spent? So I was coming up with this and the reason why, um, is because uh I was thinking, I was like, you know, why does God want our all? Um and what came to me right instantly right after is because he paid for our all, right? He paid for our all. And so if you look at yourself, if you think of yourself, you're a complex being. You're complex. There's not just one part of you. There's not just, uh, there's not just the Milton Farm. There's not just the wellness center. There's not just the spa at the country club. And the same thing with each and every one of us. There's not just one side of us, right? Um, but I was thinking about this, and I was like, well, Jesus paid it all, right? He paid the top tier level for everything inside of me. A and so if, if there's a time where I'm saying you don't have access, how would he feel if now you're saying, okay, he wakes me up at 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm rolling over, going back to sleep. Wait, I paid for this time. I paid for time with you. I paid with my blood for time with you. Oh, you, you want to get angry in traffic and you want to, you're stepping out of the spirit. Wait, wait, I still paid for that time. Even when you're upset, even when you're mad, even when you're in an argument with your spouse and you're about to say something you shouldn't say, I paid for that time. And I paid it all, and so I want access to you at all times, not just when you think it's convenient. And I, and I would be upset if I paid just like everybody else. There's an actual country club that you have to pay a million dollars to go to. But I would be upset. That if, if I paid a million dollars, I can't go eat when I want to. I can't go to the tennis court when I want to. There's nothing going on. It's not like there's construction going on. But this is the same thing I think that happens with us. When I was thinking about this, he was helping me understand that. I, there are parts of me that I don't give him access to all the time. 
There are parts of me that I don't give him access to when I give it to him when I want to. I give it to him when it's convenient. I give it to him, um, you know, if it makes me look good, whatever the case may be. There are times when I give him access and there are times when I don't give him access. But if he paid it all, he should have access all the time. And God wants our all. It's not just that he, you know, it's not just a, a control thing. He wants it. He really does want it. And, and, and it was helping me because it's not even just the good things that he wants about me. Because I'm very okay. I'm okay with giving him some good stuff. But even some bad stuff that I don't even want to talk about, that bad stuff that we were talking about today, you know, confession and repentance and things that you look in yourself, he even wants that stuff, you know. Um, he wants access to all of it. And so this is uh, the thing that God paid for. He paid for premium access to you and I. And so uh, that leads us into like what we were talking about today. Again, God wants it all. And so if we could read, we could flip in our Bibles to Genesis 22, uh, 1 through 19, if I can get a reader, Genesis 22, 1 through 19, and then Hebrews uh, chapter 11. Anybody have... Genesis 22. Oh, Genesis, sorry, Genesis 22, 1 through 19. Yes, please. Sorry. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, behold, here I am. And he said, take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee unto the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up. And went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy only son, thy son, thine only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven a second time and said, By myself I have sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed 
because thou hast obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned unto his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. Amen. Thank you for reading. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> uh, one of the questions that they ask in the book is, how do you picture Isaac when you hear his story of being almost sacrificed on the mountain? How do you how do you picture this? Like, so this is one of the um, <laughs> the more difficult, I would say, stories in the Bible, right? Um, there are some difficult stories in the Bible, like, wow, God really asked that of that person. Um, and uh, Minister Tomlinson preached a good message uh, a couple of weeks ago about, you know, whatever it takes, I'll give you my all. But this is a tough one, right? Um, how many parents in here um, would be willing? Now, God has banned human sacrifice, thank God. You know, it's, that's not part of our, our, our relationship with him. Um, but that's a tough one. That's a tough one. I don't know how many people now, and all the people that I know that are faithful in here, all the people I know in here who are, who are uh, faithful to the Lord, I don't know if I, don't, I could see any of you taking your child up to a mountain, tying them up and about to, and, and, and if you read, if this, read this lesson, if you read the story, the way that it's written in, in his head, in Abraham's head, Isaac was already dead. If you read this, Isaac was already dead. It wasn't like he didn't, he didn't go through the process, but in his mind, it was like, a, uh, it wasn't like, all right, Lord, any moment now, you know, okay, it's getting close. No, it wasn't one of those things. Like, that would be me. I'd be like, I, you know, maybe cut her cheek a little bit. Oh, well, you know, maybe it's, there's a little bit of blood. Guy. You know, that's enough, right? It's a little bit. No, it was like he was already dead in his mind. He was already going to take him out, right? And so um, how do you picture Isaac? How do you picture Isaac in the Bible? All right? Go ahead. Yeah, the microphone. Oh, okay. Uh, praise the Lord. Um, yeah, like I think any of us that have, you know, experienced this story over, you know, I have enough years. I've experienced it, you know, my own reading, um, hearing it through so many different individuals. Um, and it's powerful. But there's been a number of times, you know, I tried to wrap my mind around that position of Isaac and you know and it, it just so happens I have a son a only son, your boy yeah, yeah. James the third right, right, you know? right, right. so um, and it always leaves me like because then I'd want to say well you know <laughs> my faith was strong I'm going to believe like Abraham and we know that Abraham yeah. he not only had already consigned him gone right, but at the same time he also believed in his God. That's right. That if no, you're good. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Because he he knew his God was faithful. Yeah. And God had already let him know this was the promise. Right. So Abraham, you know, in his mind, said, "Well, there's no way that this can end there. God's going to have to raise him back up." Now, would I have been there? Yeah, um, I can't say. We, yeah. I think, all would want to believe, but like you illustrated, at the same time, I'd be like, <laughs> "Yeah, you know, I, I don't know." So, right, I leave it there. Right, right, right. Now, how about now? Now, from Isaac's perspective, also, how do you feel Isaac felt? And I was gonna uh, to Jessica, and then I'm gonna go to Brother Green over here. I was just gonna say I have different visualizations in my mind, but. First one is like drugged, and so like I picture him just like being drugged or knocked out. Like yeah. if Abraham like just hit him with a brick or something, right, so right, 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 knock him out and right. like be sacrificed. Because you you can't see him sitting there looking, right? Right. No, the other one is dad. Like what are you doing? Fear. Um, yeah. Like just laying there and like uh. The last one, which I just, it's hard to kind of picture, but I kind of picture him like, like, okay, like you're my dad and I trust you. But right. Like, yeah. It doesn't yeah. Click well. <laughs> right. 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 I mean, you can look at, um, you can think of in, in our situations and our circumstances, none of us have, but some people have been in situations in homes where they think like, my parents about to kill me. I might die. 
like in this house. I might now that's not a loving situation, right? That's not a loving, comforting situation. That's a fear situation. Um, but I can't imagine Isaac just sitting there, like you said, you know, I, I, I'm dad. What are you doing, Dad? You know what's what? Are you, what's what are you doing? What's going on? You know why would you tie me up? Uh, those type of things. I can't imagine. I also thought like you never had to spank Isaac ever in the Bible. Like that dude. If you ever saw your parents like about to take you out, like that guy was the best, well-behaved kid ever. Because I mean, if you wanted to cut up, you'd be like, he almost killed me one time. No, I'm good. I'm not gonna do whatever you thought I was gonna do. He was like the most well-behaved child because he was so afraid of his father. And so, go ahead. I like to say that I agree with the point you're making. I, I think that if I look at it from the point of Isaac, like the question was asked, um, I, I kind of look back to the relationship between Isaac and his father. You know, even how Isaac was born uh, of Sarah. You know, and then at the year she was, that he conceived and had the child, then God had made a covenant, you know, with him and said, you know, on the eighth day, circumcise your son unto me. So um, I'm pretty sure at some point that Isaac and Abraham had this conversation, right. you know, of what you know of how he came about and it's coming between him and God. So therefore, um, when he said, we're going to go up and, you know, offer this and that, I believe that, um, you know, Isaac was obedient to his father right. and he asked his father, what is this? And his father gave him an answer and he just right. continued to go. So I think that he, um, he, he trusted in his dad and also was the, the God of his father at the same right. time. So he was pretty much like, like an offspring of his father because right. his, his belief was following his father at the same time. Yeah. So he didn't question it. You know what I mean? So he, he laid on the altar and did, you know, what the father actually do. And he also trusted the same situation. But this is this is a father teaching his son. You know what I mean? So there was there was a connection between the two. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh that touches on a couple of different points that are actually really good. Um, you know, your your father has you when he's a hundred years old. Um, there's an obvious age gap, right? You know, like we if we saw a child like one with a hundred year old, we'd be like Oh, you're with your great grandfather. Oh, you're with your grandfather. You know, we'd be like, yeah, you're with an old person. You wouldn't be like, that's my dad. You know what I mean? Like, um, that that'd be really strange, right? Nowadays, we wouldn't look at it like that. And so, uh, even if Abraham didn't maybe look the same age as an older person, he definitely you could tell he was older, right? He would be able to uh, tell. And so, just a miracle of what, like Brother Green said, what he told him, how this transpired, how this whole thing came about, Isaac did have trust in his father. Isaac did have trust that, hey, this is where we came from. This is my past. I used to be an idol worshiper. The God of, uh, you know, this God showed up to me, talked to me, brought me out of here, did this for me, did that for me. While he's talking to him, he's explaining to him who this God is. I, I believe Brother Green is on the right path that he he was able to trust that his father uh, w knew what he was doing. You know, um, and that's a, that's a vital thing. And we talk to our kids even about our situations and our circumstance. So this is a whole another level, uh, another topic. But when we go through our problems, not I mean, I didn't grow up with my parents telling me the things that they struggled with. But I think in some ways that would have helped me because if I knew what my parents struggled with now, no parent wants to tell their kids the things that they ultimately like the big stuff. But I think that some of that stuff helps the kids. Some of that stuff helps. Like, my parents went through this. My parents went through this trial, and they went through this, but they still trusted God, and God brought them through. That would help them uh, when they grow up later on in life. You're the same God of my father. You brought my parents through. You did this. You did that. Help me the same way that you helped them. So, yes, absolutely. Thank you uh, for your comment. So, yeah, like I was saying, Isaac was, to me, he's, in, in the scriptures, he's so subdued. He's so quiet. You hear about Abraham. You hear about Jacob. You almost hear nothing about Isaac, really. A lot of it is like he went down to this place, and then he did, you know, very few things. Um, and I don't know if that was like a trauma. Like, it, it might have been traumatizing for him to see your parent, you know, raise a knife over you and about to kill you. That, that would be traumatizing. And so uh, that might have affected him in that particular way. Go ahead. <clears throat> Just how did he really look at him after? And yeah. Brother Green, you know, brings it out. The fact that there was that relationship and, you know, God was in this thing. Prayerfully, it was okay, but I used to, I, I used to think about that. It's like, you know, how am I looking at my father after? Just like you said, mm -hmm. he was about to plunge this knife into me. So, that quick. Amen. No, no, that's that's a good point. The Hebrew word I'm on page 57, the Hebrew word translated tempt by the King James in this passage is Nisa. Because of the association of, 
association of tempt with sin, it is better to translate this word as test, as do most recent English translations. The sense of Nisa is to put to the test in order to ascertain the nature of something, including imperfections, faults, and other qualities. According to James 1.13, God does not tempt anyone to sin. The setting of this passage is of significance. If this Mor uh, Moriah is the same is the same as the uh, location mentioned in Second Chronicles three and one, it is the area of the Temple Mount where Solomon built the built the house of the Lord, where the Lord appeared to David, and where David prepared the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. Furthermore, this passage contains the first use of the word love in the Bible. God not only reminded Abraham that Isaac was his son, but that Isaac was his only son, and Abraham loved Isaac. This heightened the emotional toll of the command that followed to offer him there for a burnt offering. Child sacrifice was a common feature of idol worship at the time of Abraham. Later, God would forbid such practices in the covenant of Moses and would condemn those nations who participated. However, at this point, Abraham had no way to know he would not be required to actually go through with the command. From past experience, we would not expect Abram to have completed, uh, to have so completely and readily obeyed God's command. But here, Abraham was a different person. Abraham knew God would not go back on his promises. The New Testament explains that he concluded God was able to raise Isaac from the dead. Hebrews 11:19. The use of the word lad indicates Isaac was a young man. The same word is used for the two young men who accompanied Abraham and Isaac. Abraham's faith is seen in his declaration that both he and Isaac would return from worshiping on the mountain. The word worship in this case means to bow down. True worship requires obedience and sacrifice. Although the, um, and so we'll go from there. But I want to read to you, um, let me read to you Hebrews 11. Hebrews eleven seventeen through nineteen. Um, he's going to put it up on the screen. So Hebrews eleven seventeen through nineteen. You got it. it? Says by faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Accounting uh, that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure. I think it's uh, later on in here, it talks about how um, that in a figure that, that connects to in his mind, Abraham saw Isaac as resurrected. He didn't know how it was going to happen. He didn't understand how it was going to happen. But a Abraham saw Isaac as resurrected. So he saw him killing him, but he also saw that God could bring him back. Um, and so that's that's the kind of faith that God is looking for for us. He's not looking for child sacrifice, but it's a it's a point that it, it makes sense that he's a father of the faithful. It makes sense that when you talk about faith, you start off with Abraham, who who did one of the things that are uh, just we it's it's really unfathomable in our time frame if somebody did that. If anybody you hear about a parent killing a child, you're like that parent is messed up, man. Um, but that's one of the things that God had asked him to do. And so you could see that he has faith in this situation. And so there are things in our lives, um, not even um, our children, but, you know, I'm thinking in my own life, what is God asking me to offer up as a sacrifice? What is he asking me to bring to this altar and, 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 and take get rid of it, you know? Um, so many times in church we have, like, Church is like an interesting place, right? We have this like daily sacrifice thing that we do because we come to church on Sundays and Thursdays and, and Tuesdays and those type of things. But sometimes like church is like, there's like some real tough things that God asks you to do that go beyond just like the common, I show up for church, go beyond, I show up for prayer, go beyond, I show up on time or I clean the floors or any of those type of things. Sometimes a walk with God is very, very difficult and um, it's good and it's 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 awesome, but it's also tough. This is not an easy walk. This is not like you know. I was we were praying earlier today, and I was like, man, I, I know I grew up in this, um, but one of the things you miss when you grow up in church sometimes is you miss sometimes the seriousness of of what this is. And and what I mean by that is, I grew up in church. I grew up you know sleeping on the pew, and I grew up in singing and dancing and shouting. But this is really a life covenant commitment. 
right? This is like, I am giving you my life, right? Um, I was thinking about this in, in terms of I was talking to some young people one time, and um, we, even when it comes to, this is a touchy subject, but when it comes to even suicide, right, for Christians, um, I gave God my life, right? And so I, I had a conversation with one person one time, and he was a Christian, and he kind of said something along the lines was, well, I can see how God would allow that to happen if they're suffering, if they're hurting. But what God was talking to me in that time was I gave you my life, right? I actually don't even own my life anymore. I don't own it. It's not mine to, it's not mine to take. It's not even my life to take. It's not my life to, to take if I wanted to commit suicide. It's not mine to take. I gave it to him, right? We exchanged lives at this point. And so for, for someone, if, if, you, if I bought a car from you and the next day you came and you had the keys still and you came and drove it off, you would be a thief because you gave it to me. I bought it from you and it's mine now. And it's the same principle when I go, when I go to God, it's, it's his life. This is his, and he has, the, he has the power to command what he wants in my life to bring him glory. And so when he wants it all from us, everything that we are, everything that we have, the good, the bad, the ugly, he wants it. And, and church, is, um, church is a funny place, man. Church is a, is a, it's not funny, ha-ha, but it's an interesting place where you have to be able and willing to give it all. And you don't, you don't, you don't think about that in the beginning, right? No one tells you, like, this is, like, when, he, when Abraham, like, if, if Abraham was like, hey, Abraham, I'm going to call you. We're going to do some great things with you, but you got to, like, kill your son. I don't know if he'd be like, uh, what? What? You know what I mean? Like, that would be like, I don't know, the options at that particular time, if I weigh my pros and cons, if I'm going to have to do this to get that, I don't know if it's worth it. You know what I mean? But at the same time, as you're going along, you realize, okay, I got to give this up. Okay, but it's, it's still better. It's still better. It's still better if I give it up. It's still better. And, and, and while you're looking at it, well, we were going through something recently, me and my wife. When you're on, like, the front side of it, it's, like, insurmountable. It's huge walls, right? It's crazy. It's all this other stuff. When you're looking back, you're like, wow, I could that's it? That I mean, like, not like it's a, not a big deal, but you look back and you go, that's not as big as I thought it was. That's not as, that's not as, I, I was attached to it, but it, it, I could have gave it up. I wish I had given it up earlier. What else do you want me to give up? Sometimes you come out of it and you're like, what else do you want me to give up? Because I'm glad I gave up that thing for you, you know? Um, but you have to learn that as you're walking along. Uh, sometimes in church, even when people, when they, and this is not knock anybody, but when people backslide, they don't see that there's something better in whatever you're going back for. And so sometimes you don't give it up. But we realize later on, I've fallen plenty of times. I'm like, that, I, for that? That's what I fell for? That was ridiculous. That's nothing compared to what he gives me. That's nothing compared to what I have in him. And so um, it's just one of those things that we, we have to always remember that when he wants it all, he said everything that we have, everything that we have. But it's so much better in him. And so uh, if you have any insights, you can mention them and bring them up at any point. Um, I'll read this. The Bib- I kind of like I read through some of the biblical insights, and I wanted to touch on some of those things on each day. So on day one, on page 58, is that first, we are rightly horrified to read that God instructed Abraham to offer his beloved son for a burnt offering. What kind of God could this be? Later, the law of Moses prohibited this kind of thing. But the inspired commenta- uh, commentary on this event found in Hebrews 11 helps us gain a more healthy and realistic perspective. Nowhere in the nature of faith better uh, better demonstrated than in the offering of Isaac by Abraham. This idea did not originate with Abraham. God called Abraham to make this sacrifice, and Abraham's response demonstrated the depths of his unquestioning trust in God. Someone said, faith begins when God speaks. Faith begins when God speaks. Does anybody want to try to interpret that kind of? Faith begins when God speaks. Is that? Do you believe that? You don't have to, because I, I kind of like, mm. how you feel about it? Faith begins when God speaks. How you feel about that statement? I feel some, I, it's not like it's a bad statement. I just feel a little bit differently about it, and I, I wanted to kind of talk about it. Um, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Because the Bible said, uh, faith cometh by hearing. Right. And by hearing the word of the Lord. Right. So whenever God speaks, he's speaking even tonight by reading his word. That's him speaking to mm-hmm. us. And it, and it helps us to 
you know, um, to um, let our faith be um, rose to the to the occasion. Yeah. You know, so so I believe that statement that faith um, begins when God speaks because mm -hmm. that's the only way you're gonna have faith in Him by yeah. hearing His word. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I you know what I, I like that. Go ahead, you were saying something. Or, uh, Minister Garnett, were you saying something? Or did your hand raise? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so I, I so when I read that originally, I was like, man, I don't know if I, I agree with that statement. Not like it's a bad thing, um, but I I understand that you you helped me explain. You helped me to understand a little bit better because. Um, God doesn't ask you a question that he doesn't expect you to ha know the answer to or to help you get through, right? Sacrifice your son. You figure it out. He doesn't do that, right? Sacrifice your son. He knew the ram was coming up the other side. He knew the whole process of what was going on. And so I think this is like, like Minister Goodwin was kind of alluding to. Faith begins when God speaks because when he speaks to you, when he says give up whatever it is, give up, when he says go over here, when he tells you to move to a different country for whatever reason, there is power and faith in what he said do, right? There's anointing in what he said do. There's provision in what he said do. If you get there and everything's not working out, you'll be like, Lord, you have to work everything out because you said it. And everything, because there is power in his word, Whatever needs to happen will happen. He says, okay, you trust me? Good. I'm glad you trust me. You moved. You did whatever you had to do. Now it's my turn to operate because you were faithful and you took this step. Now I'm going to move and operate in this particular way. So uh, having a problem with that statement before, I do not have a problem with that statement now. <laughs> Go ahead, Minister Milton, and I get Brother Green. I like that statement because the kingdom of God always want to offer all things but it's in the come on the platform of faith because without faith there's nothing we can get from the kingdom of god so when every time god is speaking he's offering something higher to give us but this what he's telling us is a platform for us to get to what he has because once we believe that then whatever we need will flow through that faith so when God said, do this, he's not just trying to force you to do something, but it's something he wants to give you. Once you enter the platform that he's calling you on, then he gives you any, the thing that behind that uh, or what he wants to give you. For example, um, Abraham, for example, I know in those days it was apparently part of the, the word at that time to sacrifice you know, people. But to sacrifice your own son, that take faith. So God is trying to give him a blessing. He knows he's not going to do it. But in Abraham mind that you said, he's already know his son is dead. Yeah. So just by the fact that he believes in that, God is ready to give him the promise. So whenever God is speaking, I believe it, he's giving us the opportunity to receive from him. I'll come back to you. So I, I was thinking when I was thinking about this particular statement, faith begins when God speaks. Um, I understand it differently now, but what I was thinking at that time was um, God can speak all day long, but I, it doesn't mean that I have faith, right? So sometimes what I was thinking was faith begins when I believe the word of God. Right. Um, but that I understand it lived differently now. But but that's where the, the difficulty was for me, because God speaks all the time. God speaks all the time and people just walk right by it. People walk by the faith. People don't pick it up. I mean, how, how many people right now? Well, not right now, but how many people are not going to go to heaven? But there's faith for you to be saved. There's faith for you to walk in victory. There's faith for you to be healed of whatever a particular thing was. I think in one particular scripture, it says he had the power to heal them all. But nobody got healed. Nobody. There was faith. The Lord was right there. There was faith to heal them all, but nobody got healed. And so that's where my little, I had a little bit of like, man, I don't know, because even when there's faith sometimes, if I don't get a hold of faith, if I don't believe what God is saying, what, what just, it's not that his word isn't powerful, but I have to accept the word and I have to believe the word. So that's where my contention was. It wasn't that the statement was terrible. It was just that sometimes we don't always hold on to the faith that is available to us. Yeah, I was going to agree with what you were saying. So <clears throat> faith, the way, I, the way I look at it is when, when God had made a covenant with Abraham, okay? So when he made a covenant with him, 
That was, that was very powerful. He made a covenant with Abraham. He didn't say he made a covenant with everybody. He made a covenant with Abraham. So that right there was, was a very, very powerful point. Okay, so when, when you transcend past, past that, anything happened after that, he had made a covenant with him, and he circumcised his son. So when the Lord told him to go do this, his obedience, his obedience, okay, the, when, when you obey God, when you do the right thing, right, then God's going to show forth his power by you obeying. So, so when he told me to do it, even though he didn't understand it, he went ahead and did it off of the promise of God. So when he did it, then God was able to provide, you know. So it's almost like when, um, when, 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 when the Lord told Moses to go and tell Pharaoh. And then he told him, well, Pharaoh's not going to listen to you, right. but, but go do it. Right. So he was like, why am I going to do it if you just said he's not going to listen? You know I mean? But it wasn't that. The point was to go. Right. And so when he went, and then he, the Lord was able to show forth his power by him obeying. So when you obey that that pushes the righteousness of God, and then the power of God. Then He, you know, show forth His power. Thank you for your service, uh, Minister Gooden. I just wanted to add. Uh, I I think it's interesting. And in the Bible says in the Book of Proverbs that it's the glory of God to conceal a thing, and there are those who believe that. Um, and, and, and it's the glory of God to conceal a thing and the honor of kings to, to search those things out. And it's believed that Abraham knew that his son was a, that killing his son, and this is a belief, I don't know, there's indications in the Bible that it's possibly true, that he knew that killing his son was a type of what was coming of the Messiah. And it's the reason why he told, you know, his servants that he was coming again. But what he didn't know was how far God was going to take it. You know, he knows God is able to resurrect the dead, you know, and so he had to be stopped. And I just wanted to comment because I think a lot of times God gives us pieces of things in all of his divine. And I heard it said here tonight, but God will give us pieces in, of his divine wisdom and he like a puzzle piece, excludes the rest. Uh, Brother Green was talking about Moses, and God told him all, you know, he was going to use him. He gave him the tool, the rod. He didn't tell him that Pharaoh wasn't going to listen. He didn't tell him that there was going to be a stubbornness when he told uh, Je uh, Samuel to go anoint the next king of Israel. He said, son of Jesse. He never told him his name, David. Right, right, right. Why did he have to go there and go through all the sons in the first place and just the same thing with this lesson, you know, God didn't tell him, you know, you're going to go up there like you mentioned, and there was going to be a ram and all that stuff. He gives us just enough to peak our faith, and then the gap is filled by our obedience, like I heard, and by the faith of our, the acting on what we believe. So the, the two things that it seems to be centering around is faith and obedience, right? Uh, James talks about show me your faith by your works. Right. Um, so there's a side of this that goes to if he wants our all, like uh, Minister Martin was just saying, there's a puzzle piece he gives you. And then you have to act on what he said in that situation. You have to move forward in that situation. And then in that situation, he reveals a little bit more. Right. The step we always quote it, the steps of a good man are ordered, but it's steps. It's not maps. It's not full GPS. You know, you can look where you're going and this is traffic here and you can reroute. No, it's like a step. It's a step-by-step -step process, and a lot of our walk with God, a lot of why this is difficult um, with Christianity, because when you when it comes to other religions, this is why I, I I look at I look at uh, Judaism, I look at Islam, I look at a lot of different things. It's very easy to follow some tenets, and then I'm not saying easy in the sense of it, it, it. There's no cost to it at all. But if I just have to sacrifice, if I just have to do these type of things, I was listening to somebody a Jewish person recently. Um, there's a whole mindset I have about Judaism and Christianity and the connection. It's it's not a bad thing, but it's it's a lot. It's not as difficult if I have to like be internalized this thing because what you saw with the Jews is you saw that they're human just like we are, but they externalized everything. All I got, I don't. My heart isn't towards you. You hear that over and over again. These people, their mouth is towards me, they're, they, but, but their heart's not towards me. They say they're for me, but they're really not for me. And so with, with Christianity, it's a lot more difficult because I can't hide in my heart what I really feel about him. There's no tenets that I'm really doing. I'm not sacrificing this animal. There's some things that I have to do, but I'm not sacrificing this animal. I'm not keeping the Sabbath this day. I'm not doing those type of things like all the people that want to do that nowadays. There are so many people that are reverting back to keeping the Sabbath and doing all this stuff and the, the Meshiach and all the names and stuff, and you're like, listen, 
you know, he died for our sins. You don't have to keep the Sabbath. Every day is a Sabbath. Stop it. You know, you don't even know what you're talking about, half the stuff that you're talking about. Um, but it's this this reversion back to, like, I want to keep the Sabbath, and I want to eat this type of food. And I, it's, a, it's easier. That's a lot easier than, like, hey, you got some stuff on your heart you have to deal with. Like, you have to look internally and, like, look at the stuff that you're like, I'm like, oh, that's, that's much more. I would rather just eat the food. <laughs> just eat the food and I'm good, you know? Like, but I got to look at my heart. I got to repent for, my, for what I said to this brother. I got to go back and fall on my, my knees and say, I'm sorry. I, I was wrong. I was jealous of you. I was angry. I was hurt from my past. Something that, you know, your parents might not even be alive that they hurt you. You got to deal with that stuff now. Like, this is not an easy thing that you have to just, you can just slide by. Christianity is very difficult, you know, um, but somebody said it will kill you, and it, it will. <laughs> it will kill you. Like <laughs> the you that is there, the, all the flesh that you have, all the pride that you have, it will kill you. And, and it will, it's, that's the point because he's trying to get out. He's trying to, he wants to be seen out of you. But if all the things that I am are, are, are blocking who he is and what it, it manifests in him, then he doesn't get the glory. He doesn't get the glory in my life. And so that's one of the things that we have to do. I got 10 minutes, but he wants to get the glory in our life. So, um, yeah, and, and, and a connection to that faith begins when God speaks. Uh, Philippians 2 and 13 says, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So even if I'm following God and I have faith in God, it's really not just me that has faith. It's he that started the process of faith. And then I'm just following down the pathway. Faith is an open door for me to just walk down. And so, um, you know, I hope that you're getting something out of this, that your all is important to God. And so we can move closer to him, especially if we're in a fast right now. These are one of the things that you can give up some extra stuff. You don't have to, like Pastor was saying, we don't have to go back to anything. You know, you can give up some extra stuff. Some, somebody went on a fast one time and they stopped eating meat after it the whole time. You know, I'm like, whoa, okay. That's not for me, Lord, but that's for somebody, Lord. That's for somebody. I I, I believe it. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Amen. Bless him. Um, I hear this statement over and over um, uh, since we started this Bible study about Abraham, see Isaac already dead, you know, in his mind. My question is, so why then when Isaac asks the question, where I see the wood, I see the altar, where is the sacrifice? Why then Abraham said God will provide a sacrifice if he already see him dead as that sacrifice? Anybody want to take that? That's a good, great question. Um, that's a really good question. I, I would personally, um, and I'm never going to do this, just so you know. Oh, we got, we'll have one Minister Martin. He's, he's a brainiac guy. He'll, he'll answer this, and then I'll, I'll chime in after. Good. I'm not trying to cut you off. No, no, go ahead. Uh, the one interesting thought I heard about that is in the language, and it stands out more in the original language than it in the Hebrew uh, and than it does in the English. But it says God will provide who? Himself a sacrifice. The emphasis on who is the sacrifice God is providing, not necessarily referring to he's going to provision himself something else, but in the prophetic statement of uh, and I mentioned before that there's indication that Abraham knew that it was a type. He, it was prophetic that God himself will be the sacrifice. He'll provide himself as the sacrifice. And so that's one interpretation. Right. Um, the other the other time, the other the way I would say it is, uh, let me see what he says here. Um, I just think it's a more, pra I think practical I don't think it would be a practical reason. To, like, if I were like Riley, I have to tie you down and like slit your throat. I don't think it'd be practical for her to be like for me to tell her that. Just from a practical standpoint, would you stick around if your dad was like, "Hey, come on, let's go upstairs, like go up this mountain real quick. I gotta tie you down. I gotta cut you open." I'd be like, ah, "I'll see you later. I'm gonna go talk to mom real quick. I think you need her need to figure some stuff out, mom and dad. Like, I'm not hanging out with you right now. Uh, I'll be over here." Just from a practical reason, I think he's like, nah, I'm not. T I can't tell him. Like, he, he's a young man. This is a. It said he's a lad. I would run from my dad for sure if I knew that he was gonna tie me up and, and slap me. Like, Mom, I'm out of here. I'm getting out of here. I think just from a practical reason, from my perspective, it'd be more a practical reason. Like, I can't tell you this. And I know it's prophetic, in, in one sense, there is a prophetic nature of it, but there's also a practical nature that says, I, if I tell this kid, he's on. 
You know, I'm not even telling the dude dudes down there because they're gonna be like, "Oh, I'm going to tell on you." Like, I'm going to tell Sarah. Like, Sarah's running over there. You better leave my baby alone. Like, all this stuff going on. You know, so. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good and everything. And I'm telling you, I would run too. But the thing is, the fact of the matter is, the age of Abraham and the age of Isaac. You know, he was a, a, t a teenager. Young, frisk, strong. I believe he's stronger than his father. So even you didn't tell me, when we get to the altar and you're trying to bind me, to put me on that altar, we're going to have a problem. So Isaac was very submissive to whatever his father was doing. He was very submissive. And, and I believe that, but I strongly believe that Abraham knew that right then and there, even when the knife hit the skin of his son, God is going to make some kind of provision. Right. No, no I, I, I agree with that point. You, you were saying, though, why didn't he tell him or why did he say it a particular way? And that's what I was saying is he, I think he didn't tell him a particular reason because of that. that I was thinking from a practical standpoint. I agree with what you're saying uh, in that. Minister Milton, you had something to say? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got five minutes left, so I'll just I'll read this uh, section on page 59. Abraham's faith was, uh, was the confidence of things hoped for and the convi uh, conv conviction of things not seen. He concluded that if he offered at Isaac, God was able to raise him up. When, Abraham, uh, when people consider the offering of Isaac, they commonly focus on the inner turmoil of Abraham as he set out to obey God. But not only is the Old Testament account silent about any such turmoil, that is not the focus in Hebrews 11, 17 through 19. The point, is, um, the point in Hebrews is the challenge that faced Abraham to, re to reconcile God's promise with God's command. Abraham knew without question that Isaac was the promised son through whom God would fulfill his promise to make Abraham the father of many nations. So when I, when I was there... Uh, I wrote down, seeing God work in past miracles should bolster our faith for current situations. So if he's 90, he's 100 at the particular time, and he sees his wife is 90. Now, it was possible for a 100-year-old man to have a baby. But for that 90-year-old woman, he knew she wasn't having any kids. And so for him to go from, I'm having a kid and she's having a kid, to I can believe God for anything. Right. I could believe God for anything there. This is like she's not it's not like she had other kids in the past and then she's not having kids anymore. She's never had a kid. Not only was she barren, God didn't open her womb, but she's past the the age of childbearing. You know, even if it were possible and she's not barren, she can't even have them because she's past that age. So for God to do that thing, for that miracle, for her to for for that baby to be born, you think about that nine, ten months in the baby. You're like, what? like I was thinking about this when I was reading um, when it came to Elizabeth. Same principle. You know, you're thinking about that. Uh, Zacharias was that whole ten months. He was silent. That whole 10 months, but he's looking at the miracle of God. He's looking at the wonder of God. This older lady, his wife, his lovely wife that he loves, is now pregnant with a child, and you can see the kicking. You can see that, you know, in that first couple of months, you know, it's it's weird for a guy. I don't see any movement. I don't see any, but I see your stomach, right? But when you start seeing those little arms move and those little legs start stretching out, you know, that, that start bolstering your faith. You're like, wait, wait. If I had whatever God says, I've seen him do the miracle in my life. I've seen him do the things that are impossible. Uh, yeah, he can raise him from the dead. Yeah, it's possible that God can raise him from the dead. So I'm going to sacrifice my child. Whatever you ask me to do, Lord, I will be willing to do that type of thing. And each and every one of us has that type of miracles in our life. You know, um, I, I read something at the end of 2021, and they were saying you should get a jar. And every week you should write down some miracle that God does. You should put it in that jar. So at the end of the year, you can pull that thing out and you can start reading the testimonies of the Lord because each and every one of us has a testimony. And the enemy is very good at trying to, like when we go through a real trial, like when we go through something that's, you know, because what's funny is that every trial is a real trial. We'd be like, it's a real trial. This trial is a real trial. The last one didn't seem as big as this one. This one's way bigger than the last one, you know. And then the next one will be way bigger than that one, you know. And, and it's always this type of thing. Um, and so, but he's very good at seeing, like, you won't make it through this one. You're not going to make it through this one. But if I have that jar, 
If I have those testimonies, if I write that stuff down, the Bible says you overcome by the, uh, the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. I can pull that out. No, no, no. I know that he saved me. I know that he brought my child about. I know that I was in an accident and I was supposed to die. No, he could do this one for me. He could do this one. I don't see how he can do it, but he can do this one. This is the kind of thing that Abraham did. I'm, I'm 100. She's 90. No, if I kill him, he's coming back. He's coming back. I know because the God that I serve can do anything. He can do anything. And so that's the kind of that's the kind of faith that Abraham had. Go ahead, sir. You can finish this up. We can we can stand to our feet. You can finish this up. Go ahead. This is the last thought that I may end with tonight. Whenever obedience meet faith, miracle happens. Right. Every time obedience meet faith. Um, and I think God is ready at all times to give us a miracle every day. I'll give you an example. If God spoke to you and said, Go pray for this person. Um, until you make up your mind, nothing happens. You may look at the person's face. I'm not sure they're ready for prayer. I'm not sure for this. But once you make up your mind and begin to move toward that direction, God begins to arrest the person. So I believe that once this man has made up his mind to go with this land, God arrested his son, caused him to become restrained, not running away, just become obedient. It's all because he took a, a, a step of faith towards what God said. And I think that in this time we are living in, whatever he tells us, once we take a faith towards him, like Minister Marvin says, he's not going to show everything right there. But once you take one step, the rest of the thing begin to fall in place. You got heavy, I mean, heavy knows that, okay, I'm ready. All right, he's going now. All right, send the supplies. Everything he needs or she needs. So I think when obedient meet faith, God make all things possible. Amen. Amen. So in this year of new beginnings, there's a level of faith that I think when we read stuff like this, that God's going to tell you to do something in 2022 that seem, may seem impossible and may seem um, like far-fetched, right? Um, but like it said there in the beginning when it talked about tempt and test, he says it tests you to see what's inside of you. He tests. So when he, he asks me to do something that seems impossible, he's not doing it to make me fail. But, but I'm always like, Lord, I love you more than anything. Lord, I'll do everything for you. Test. Here comes the test. Will you do everything for me? Because you keep saying you will. And so here's what's showing you what's inside of you. Because I can already see. But I want to see what's inside of you. I want you to see what's inside of you. So if there's anything that's hindering me, Lord, I pray that I remove that thing out of my life and want to give it to you like Abraham did. Let's pray, Lord. We thank you today for the lesson. We thank you, God, for you You gave your all for us, God. And, I, and we want to be faithful to you. We want to honor you. We want to be people, men and women of faith, God. I pray that there's nothing that we hold back from you, God. Whatever it is, in whatever way you're testing us now, whatever way you're saying give up what Whatever that thing is, God, I pray that we can give it up because you're always better. You're always greater. There's something always that, that's more uh, in store for us when we can give up whatever it is that we have in, 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 in front of us, God. I pray that you help us. Help your children, God. Help all of us to be more like you, God, so we can reflect your glory, God. These are the, the last days. These are dark times, God, and there's all kinds of things going on. But as our faith grows, people will see that they know who the true God is. They know hallelujah hallelujah where miracles are they understand they may lay hands on the sick at my job god and somebody get healed whatever the case may be i know that they have faith because they've they've given up some things they've been tested and they know how to honor you they know how to give it up for you i pray in the name of jesus keep us under your blood help us to complete this fast god help us to get things out of this fast that we have never gotten before god help us to go higher in jesus name we pray Jesus' name, amen.